Welcome back to the Oxidation Reduction Playlist on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous set of videos, we talked about, car we talked about carbon oxygen bond oxidation. So we talked about how to oxidize alcohols into aldehydes, aldehydes into carboxylic acids, etc., etc. And we talked about this oxidation state hierarchy. We talked about uh, primary alcohols were the lowest oxidation state. Those could be oxidized, meaning increase the number of bonds to oxygen. Those can be oxidized into aldehydes or ketones. And if we have an aldehyde, we can oxidize it further into a carboxylic acid. And I'll go ahead and mention this one more time because this is a pretty good picture. The oxidation state is determined by the number of bonds that a particular carbon has to oxygen. So this carbon where my mouse is on the primary alcohol has one bond to oxygen. So it's a lowest oxidation state shown here. This carbon, which is the same carbon atom, just, just an aldehyde, this carbon atom has two bonds to oxygen. A double bond counts as two bonds. Okay, so this is a higher oxidation state than an alcohol. And then this carbon over here in the carboxylic acid has three bonds to oxygen. One bond to this oxygen down here, and then a double bond to this oxygen, which makes three total bonds. And if we move from left to right, so from an alcohol to an aldehyde to a carboxylic acid, that's the direction of oxidation. Reduction is the reverse direction. So a reduction is when we go, say, from, in this case, a carboxylic acid to an aldehyde to an alcohol. Or in the bottom, if we reduced a ketone to an alcohol, a secondary alcohol, that is, that is a reduction. So oxidation goes, in this case, to the right, whereas reduction goes to the left. If we take another uh, look at a picture right here, we can see that if we go up on this, like we talked about in the previous set of videos, going from an alcohol to an aldehyde to a carboxylic acid, that's oxidation. If we go downwards, carboxylic acid to aldehyde to alcohol, going downwards is reduction. So they're reverse directions of each other in terms of oxidation state. Now, Here's a, a good uh, look at some of the reagents of carbonyl reduction, okay? Or in other words, CO bond reduction. We have two main reagents that we're going to use a heavy amount in carbonyl reduction. We have one that's called sodium borohydride, NABH4. Then we have another one that's called lithium aluminum hydride, LIALH4, okay? Now, just like we had strong oxidants and weak oxidants, we have weak, ox weak reductants. A weak reductant or a weak reducing agent is sodium borohydride. Lithium aluminum hydride is a strong reductant or a strong reducing agent. Okay? One of the ways I, I know to recognize these two reagents I just learned, they all have a bunch of hydrogens. They have these this some part of the formula, LILA, excuse me, LIAL, and then an H4. We have NAB and then H4. So they have hydrides, and they can actually donate these hydrides. Okay? Now, because sodium borohydride is a weak reducing agent, it's only able to reduce a few of the functional groups. Actually, to be really precise, a couple of them. Sodium borohydride can actually only reduce ketones and aldehydes. Okay? Sodium borohydride is kind of like the PCC of reducing agents. It's the weaker one and only does ketones and aldehydes. Lithium aluminum hydride, on the other hand, is the strong reducing agent, and it's very strong. It will pretty much reduce almost anything. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at, first of all, the weak reducing agent, which is sodium borohydride. And then after we look at the theory behind it right here, we'll go onto the black screen and then we'll kind of look at some uh, written examples to hopefully gain a better grasp on it. All right, so like I said, sodium borohydride is the weaker reducing agent. And as I mentioned, it only reduces aldehydes and ketones. It does not react with any of the other carbonyl functional groups. So sodium borohydride does not react with amides. It does not react with esters. It does not react with carboxylic acids. This only reacts with ketones and aldehydes. So if you see a reaction that says, predict the product, and it has an, it has an ester and sodium borohydride, it is no reaction, okay? Just wanna make that perfectly clear. So 
This is a ketone. We know it's a ketone because it's a carbon-oxygen double bond with two other carbons attached. We use sodium borohydride and it reduces this carbon-oxygen double bond into a CO single bond. Okay, P particularly it just turns this ketone or this carbonyl into an alcohol. Okay, and I also mentioned that here. Ketones get converted into secondary alcohol, so that's this first example. Okay, now aldehydes. This is our carbon-oxygen double bond. We know it's an aldehyde because it only has one other carbon group attached, which is to the left. If we use sodium borohydride on this, this carbon-oxygen double bond gets converted into a carbon-oxygen single bond, in which case we see that it's actually an alcohol, this OH. And so, like I said here, aldehydes get converted into primary alcohols. Okay? So really, the thing about sodium borohydride is, this weak reducing agent, is if you see that you're dealing with a ketone or an aldehyde, just simply replace the CO double bond with an alcohol. That's pretty much all there is to this reaction. Now let's go to the, the black screen and we'll take a look at some specific examples. All right, so now that we've covered some of the theory behind sodium borohydride, which is a weak reductant or weak reducing agent, let's do some practice problems to get a grip and an understanding on uh, how it works in a practical sense. So I've got five compounds here, and we're going to see what the reaction does if we react each of these with sodium borohydride. All right, so the first thing we have, let's look and see what functional group this is. Okay, this is a ketone. And we know that sodium borohydride only reacts with ketones and aldehydes. If we go back to this slide right here, which was in the PowerPoint earlier, we see that sodium borohydride only is able to reduce ketones and aldehydes. In fact, it has a slightly easier time reducing aldehydes. Um, but this is a ketone and it will still reduce it. So essentially all we're doing is we're reducing this double bonded uh, oxygen, or this double bond between the carbon and the oxygen, to an OH. Okay, so what does that give us? Well, we keep the carbon skeleton the same, and we just replace that double bond oxygen with an OH. And that's all there is to sodium borohydride reduction. All right, let's look and see the next molecule. This molecule, the only relevant part of it is this carbonyl right here, this carbon double bonded to the oxygen. Um, we see that functional group is an aldehyde. Um, you could even include the hydrogen over here. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But it's an aldehyde. Sodium borohydride will reduce that. So let's first of all draw the carbon skeleton. And then we know that uh, sodium borohydride reduces this carbon-oxygen double bond into an OH group. All right. So that would be the product of the second reduction. All right, let's look at the next one. Here we have one, two, three, four. This is actually butanoic acid. It's a carboxylic acid. Now, will sodium borohydride reduce a carboxylic acid? And the answer is no. So sodium borohydride, remember, only reacts with ketones and aldehydes. So when we have a carboxylic acid, we will have no, oops, no reaction, okay? Let's move on to the next one. All right, so now we've got sodium borohydride reacting. It's going to be attempting to reduce this functional group, which is an ester. Again, the main thing you need to remember, sodium borohydride only reacts with ketones and aldehydes. Esters will not react with sodium borohydride, so this is going to be a case, again, where we have no reaction. Um, I will preface this. We're going to cover this in the next video when we talk about stronger reducing agents or stronger reductants, which include lithium aluminum hydride. Lithium aluminum hydride, in addition to being able to reduce ketones and aldehydes, lithium aluminum hydride will also reduce carboxylic acids, esters, and then several other functional groups, which we'll cover in the next video. But sodium borohydride does not reduce carboxyls or esters, so no reaction there. All right. All right, now let's take a look at this next compound right here. It's a mixture of two functional groups. Over here on the left side of the compound, we have a ketone. And then on the right side, we have an aldehyde, okay? Both of those functional groups will be able to be reduced by sodium borohydride, so let's see what happens. Over here on the left, this carbon-oxygen double bond will be reduced into an alcohol, an OH. And then over here on the right side of the molecule, this carbon-oxygen double bond, which is the aldehyde, will be reduced into another alcohol. 
Okay. Um, just do some quick review. Um, nothing too much in detail, but um, in the previous set of videos we covered oxidations. If we reacted this molecule with PCC, oops, excuse me, PCC in um, a dichloromethane solution, so the main part is PCC, that's a weak oxidation. So what would happen is we would oxidize this OH, this is a secondary alcohol. Um, we know it's a secondary alcohol because this carbon atom to which the OH is attached has one, two carbon groups attached to it, so it's secondary. Um, that would get oxidized into simply a ketone, okay? And if we look at the other alcohol, the other alcohol, which is a primary alcohol since that carbon only has one other carbon group attached, using PCC we simply take that carbon-oxygen single bond and oxidize it into a double bond. In fact, we end up with the same molecule that we started with. One more piece of review is if instead of using a weak oxidant, we use instead a strong oxidant. Um, an example would be the Jones oxidation, which we covered in other videos. Okay, so let's do a Jones oxidation on this. Well, for secondary alcohols, the result is exactly the same. We still get a ketone, it's just a simple carbon-oxygen double bond. But on the end, when we have a primary alcohol, this OH, if we use a Jones oxidation, will be oxidized into a carboxylic acid. Okay, So that was just a little bit of review, but hopefully this uh, video helped you understand the basics behind sodium borohydride. It only reduces ketones and aldehydes, any other carbonyl containing compound for the most part, it does not do anything to. If we want to reduce carboxylic acids, esters, and other functional groups like amides and, um, and uh, sulfoesters, um, or thioesters, excuse me, we're going to have to use a stronger reducing agent, which we'll cover in the next video, which is called lithium aluminum hydride. All right. So make sure to like this video, uh, subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications, and like I said, in the next video, we're going to cover lithium aluminum hydride. Thank you.